Hi there. Welcome to the Battle for a Healthy Voice. I'm Dave Moyer. Normally my voice is a little clearer than this, but I have a bit of a cold, so please bear with me. I have been a coach for over 50 years, and I want to save voices one voice at a time. Our host and our producer is Sunny Galt. So here's Sunny. Hi, David. Hi, guys. Thanks so much for watching our videos, for subscribing, for commenting. We love hearing from you guys. And today, David, we're doing a video. This is part of our How to Sing series. We're going to talk about singing on the breath. This is something that comes up quite a bit. Now, before we dive into that, if you haven't already, go to our website, purebelcanto.com. David and I did a video course that teaches you more about Pure Bel Canto the history of Pure Bel Canto, and David is also launching a group course, or well, it's more than a course, it's a group class. Yeah. It's a class where he's going to teach you guys how to sing and speak using Pure Bel Canto. And there's a free one-on-one -on -one voice, lens, voice lesson that you get even before and that. And I say every video because you got to try the shoes on before you buy them. They might That's not right. fit. Hey, I also want to tell you, if you look up AmericanMusicAcademy.com, that has a link to Pure Bel Canto. Oh, That's our music school. Now we're going to talk about singing on the breath. Yeah. What does it mean to sing on the breath? Well, here's what I teach. You have to have breath in the tone, but a tone should not be breathy. And all I would add to that is, if you have allergies, it's very possible, like me, you'll have a bit of a breathy tone. Mm -hmm. But the least amount of breath is what you want it to be. So the bands have to come together naturally. There is a natural tension. And the best way to discover it is to use Luciano Pavarotti's system that he used at Juilliard. It's called the yawn sigh. When I first heard that, I thought it was Asian. A yawn, a sigh. You know. <laughs> and then I found out, no, it's yawn sigh. You're yawning and you're trying to be polite. So inside, your mouth opens way up and you have a crack between your teeth about as much as it would as much as your jaw would drop, if I said just release your jaw, don't purposely open it wider. So now I do this. Put an H on the front of the vowel. Let's try who. And you slide down like this. Any pitch you want. Now, you take your finger, put it on the little bump, which is called your epiglottis. Some folks call it an Adam's apple. Anyway, you put it on top of it, you gulp. Make sure it stays there. If that goes in and up, then you're not doing on the breath correctly. So you go back to the who. Who? Who? Now there's five basic vowels. There's E, A, A, O, and U. And we teach it with the Italian version of those vowels. E, A, A, O, and U. And I just realized I did wrong on the A. So, <laughs> E, A, A, O, U. Now I switch to maybe whatever I want to a different one. Hey! And I do that, making sure this stays where it is. Gulp, let it go to its regular position. That's what's the position of natural tension. And if you want to see some pretty good pure bel canto, look up on the internet, on YouTube, African-American ventriloquist, 20 years old, wins. And it'll bring her up. And when you watch her, and if you've ever watched a ventriloquist, they're talking and it looks like they're puppets talking. Yeah. And their mouth is perfectly still. Yet when you hear her sing, she sings pop. <laughs> then she true. goes into opera yeah. and you go, wait a minute, that's a different voice. Well, of course it is. Yeah. Intellectually, you can change the shape of the muscles internally and externally to sing the pop style of your choice, the country style of your choice, but you still sing as much as possible on the breath. But remember, when you do styles, there is a percentage of compression. And when you get emotionally more than a very light-minded person who's always, oh, everything is a bowl of cherries. But, you know, emotions <laughs> don't just do that. We get we get deeper. Yeah. So there will be some compression with that. The idea is to sing as much as as much as you can on the breath. Woo! Now once you've done this yawn sigh, you do like a plane that lands. 
You let it slide down, and you just decide what pitch you're going to land on, and then you sustain it. If you're doing it right, low, natural, natural position for the uh, epiglottis, finger on the ledge, and it stays there, and you land your vibrato, as long as you're supporting front, back, and sides, it'll manifest like this. It'll do that, every vowel. Now, my voice is broken there, so I won't go that low. I'll go a little higher. And is, does that cause me any, do I feel like, <laughs> no, there's no tension in that in terms of external tension. I am not tense, I am not relaxed, but I'm poised like a ballet dancer getting ready. I'm doing a pirouette when I sing, if you will. <laughs> Stand alive! I can't do it today because of my broke, cold. Yeah. My cold won't let me do it. But I could sing just like the Bee Gees. Yeah. Well, watch their video. Watch how they redesigned their voices, go back into the 60s, listen to them sing. They wore their voices out. Then they learned to sing, really, quite honestly, bel canto in their top two. So the Bee Gees are probably a good example. In are the there, older. In the older. The Staying older. alive, staying alive. Okay. Are there you know. other contemporary singers that we may uh, be familiar with? Some of Michael Bublé when he sings very soft. Okay. Um, some of early Celine Dion, some, okay. lower range. Uh, Josh Groban, very good, except upper range. Okay. He, um, because there's a method in Belcano, ladies and gentlemen and boys and girls, that's being taught now and has been dominating the world for almost 200 years. That the voice is the same volume in the bottom as you go up into the top. Well, the truth of the matter is God didn't make us that way. If you look at a hummingbird and it makes a sound, does it go, oh, <laughs> no. The higher you go, the voice apexes. And to get those top two gears, you cannot put the same volume into them that you would. So it's kind of like this. Hummingbird. You come down a little bit. Sparrow. Chickadee. Chickadee, rather. Then you kind of come into either, you could say Robin or myself, because this is where I speak. Then I come into lower, big, big bullfrog. Ooh, small bullfrog, big mouth. Ooh, ooh. there we are. Yeah. That's singing on the breath. The voice should have breath in the tone, but it shouldn't be breathy. The voice, it should be low and natural, not jammed, but natural. There should be no excessive. The barbershop teaches this. Three <laughs> that's fingers. That's how big it sh your mouth should yeah, be. Yeah, they want three fingers. Oh, wow. And, and so, you're saying the exact opposite. Yeah, it's exactly the opposite. And, and I called it, I came up with about 10 years ago, a term that I use. It's called the cave theory, which means if you're in a cave, when you go in the cave, is the opening that you came through as big as the cavern of the cave? <laughs> then it wouldn't be a cave. Well, what, what would, <laughs> then it wouldn't be a cave. Yeah. Well, and when you make a noise in it, it bounces all over the walls. Right. Well, if you blow the front end off the cave so that it's as big as the inside, you'll still get some resonance. Yeah. Like like at the L.A. LA um, like an amphitheater. Amphitheater. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's got that cone because it captures some of the sound. But the truth is it would be better if you sang in a cave. Mm -hmm. And then you get this. Oh, instead of, uh, <laughs> and my voice did that. I didn't do it on purpose. Yeah. When I did that, it just, that's what it does. It doesn't like right. that shape. And naturally, the God-designed voice, the, all yeah. of them, they don't like that shape. And yet, almost and everybody's. We keep, yeah, we keep going yep, in that we direction. We keep going in that direction, like the one we did earlier. Yeah. And Kanto, yeah. they're doing it yeah. totally, speaking and singing. Okay, that's All right. how you do it. That's how you do it, guys. For more information, check out our website, purebelcanto.com. Check out the course. Check out David's classes. Get that one-on-one -on -one free consultation so we can help you with your speaking and singing voice. We want to teach you pure belcanto. Yes, I'm not looking to get students. I have plenty of them. But the reason I'm doing the free lesson is because you got to fit. you got to feel comfortable fitting like buying shoes. you got to try them on before you buy them. Yeah. It's that simple. So, so try David on before you buy him. Yep, that's right. <laughs> See you guys later. Thanks a lot.